Welcome, crew, to What Are Your Three, a Channel 3 podcast, where we take a member of the Channel 3 community, talk about three games, some honorable mentions, future game they're looking forward to, other odds and ends to have a good video game discussion. I'm Dan Tucker. With me, as always, is El Ray. What's going on, everybody? Today's guest is known for two things. First, he is the host of the Dad Gaming's Sunday Rect League. That is the no-build Fortnite event. Was doing no-builds before no-building was cool. Um, it is possible that Fortnite actually called the Dad Gaming. That's the reason Fortnite exists with their no-build mode now. I'm completely sure of it. And second, and, mo- and more importantly, he is the master of tagging everyone on Facebook. I mean, he is if he's nothing else, he is consistent by tagging people on Facebook every week. Everyone gets tagged. It is c3.gg slash Gargata. Hello, Gargata. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing pretty well today. It's a nice evening, that's for sure. All right, well, without further ado, we'll get into this thing. So the first game you have up here to talk about is the NES Classic release day in the U.S. drop. Excite Bike 4.4 rated on Channel 3. Since we put the top 10 racing list feature out there, a bunch of top 10 racing list games. So, of all the games you could have picked, how did Excite Bike end up first one on the list? Well, this this is the game that really got me into game. My family grew up fairly poor, and I have older siblings, much older siblings, and my sister got a NES when her and her husband, and this is one of their first games they had for it. And I always would beg to go over to their house so I could sit, build a track, and race and race, and then build another track and race until they told me I had to shut it off. You're supposed to come see the family. You're supposed to come over for the. Vi- yeah, I, I, I fully understand what happens with that when the NES is the back room or the whatever's in the back room. You go over there. That that you you brought up the coolest part about Excite Bike though, being able to actually build and customize tracks on a very early system compared to what we're dealing with now. What, what'd you do? Go all all tall hills, little little short, little tall. How'd you mix that up? I actually would do a, a good mix of both. I would see how far I could launch the bike before I hit the side of a hill like try to land it perfect and then i would do a bunch of the small ones just to see if i could get the bike to flip over a bunch of times it was always a lot of fun so you were into destruction okay so that answers the question it's almost like its own rorschach test what exactly kind of course do you build an excite bike and you could take a look and do some real psychoanalysis on a person based on that so you're a you're a bit of a (laughs) torturer as long as there's no small animals involved we're good it's all healthy we don't have to read about it on the news later definitely no small animals involved now, it was a fun game, though, because, you know, you just kind of... So were you one, you just cr- try and grind times, try and grind things down? Were you just kind of playing, just be like, oh, this is the greatest thing I've ever done, just to get a little bit of an escape there? I just always thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever done. Like I said, I, I grew up really poor. Like right? We were lucky to have a black and white TV in the 80s. So this was amazing to have some mind that, blowing. Yeah, mind blowing, no doubt. Color TV, and you could play video games and do stuff like that. I had played video games before that, but it was or Atari, something else, that, a ColecoVision that a friend of my parents had. But that five minutes here, ten minutes there, what it felt like anyway. But this was, I could sit for hours and play. It was that good. You gotta, we got to get another time trial or something in there for Excite Bike. Basic came in and broke the thing with a 54-second time when we did Excite Bike last time. And, and I, I couldn't figure out how he did it, but good for him. But we, we need to work some more Excite Bike in as we got a whole uh, whole other flush of games here. So with that, let's, let's move on to game number two, Shining in the Darkness. Uh, what I'm going to call a rare RPG on Genesis. You didn't have a whole lot of those. That was more the Super Nintendo 16-bit era. It was a game that I had totally forgotten about. But when I really went and looked, I think Ray's the one who put this into the library from the uh, the Gargata Manifesto, uh, the Gargata, the Gargata Archives, if you will. When we, when we got the uh, the list of 372 Gargata games, I think Ray was handling yours exclusively, so it wasn't one I had looked at. But the second I I went and looked, because I went to to update and make sure we had everything. You know, we've added trailers onto game pages now. You know, we've added game ratings where they're available from the ESRB. Just kind of adding some extra features here to make it a one stop shop watching the video and looking at the screenshots for that one i totally forgot about this game but first of all i gotta call it out for you because you have this listed as your number one rpg of all time that it's kind of skewed on that it was the bridge for me between D and video games love playing D and i love playing video games and this was the bridge not only that this this game is super special for one simple reason the copy I had, the battery 
had broken off of it. So you could not save it and shut the Genesis off. I had to leave my Genesis on for three weeks straight, four weeks straight, just to finish this game. And because of that, I, I did it. You think modern systems get hot or modern computers get hot? I had to put two box fans on this Genesis to keep it cool, just so it would not overheat. Yeah, the, the Genesis was not built for, <laughs> for extended stays along those lines. Oh, I, you know, I was going to bring up the battery backup story because that I, I saw that while I was looking through the game and looking through some of the histories and quests and what's available. That's crazy. And, it, you know, it's funny because I didn't really I always knew like, oh, battery backup, which is a feature that they talked about starting with like the Zelda games. And it wasn't until like the PlayStation 2 era, I got a hold of a copy of Super Mario RPG and it wouldn't save. And that's how I learned, oh, it's literally, it is just a physical battery inside. And I learned how to crack it open and go, you know, I went and bought the little watch battery you need to, it was luckily one I could get and easily replace, but that's, that was hilarious that, because that, that, you know, while I was looking, I mentioned, you know, they didn't really have a lot of commercials for every game back in the eighties and nineties. So that was a game, you know, normally we try and put a trailer up or a commercial up for a game on the channel three library page. And if I can't find one of those, usually I'll pull some YouTube long play video of it. There's no long play of that. That is not broken up into two parts because it takes about seven hours straight. Even for a person who's like, speed running and going through that game it takes them at least seven hours to go through that so yeah that's the, doing that for like three weeks like go play an hour here play an hour there <laughs> over that period of time sounds about right you know it, it was a little bit different from a lot of the you know from my recollection uh, a lot of the JRPGs that you saw on like the Super Nintendo where you had like, yeah, there was turn-based combat for it, but the way they had kind of like that, is would you call it like a Doom first-person shooter approach to it? It had more of a Dungeons and Dragons feel. You brought that up there. Uh, I think that's probably a little bit more accurate for that one. It, um, it was very much a dungeon crawl versus the large map that you run around and run into people and then you go into smaller areas. This was a dungeon where you had to crawl through. Very similar to the old MUDs. I don't know if you guys ever played MUDs where you would go north or go west or go east. You couldn't. It was all text-based. It was similar to that, but in video form. So that that was another draw to me. I lo- enjoyed the MUDs also. So All right, so let's move to game number three on the list. And I would think people are... I, at this point, I don't think people are surprised because it seems like the game that everyone is known for never ends up on a top of these lists here. So we've got Fortnite as game number three. So I, I have kind of like different details of questions, but I'll, I'll start with what's what's your angle on Fortnite? Why, why are you in it? Why do you play it all the time? Because you know, we have so many people that play it and love it at different levels and different ways of playing it. You know, what, what's your story with Fortnite? So years ago when Fortnite came out, I actually made fun of it. I did not like it. I thought it was a joke. Everyone. Um, Everybody made fun of it. I can tell you, it was, it was weird. It was weird. It was different. And my boy got into it. And I, I was just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I never played shooters. About the only shooter prior to Fortnite that I played was Renegade, Command and Conquer Renegade, which that's hardly known. I had I had played Doom or Wolfenstein, stuff like that, Duke Nukem, but a little bit, not, not my thing. And I made fun of the game. Well, I think it was Chapter 1, Season 7. They gave away the battle pass for season eight. And my boy's begging me, begging me, begging me. Hey, just play, just play. Come on, just play. I'll help you get this. I'll help you in the battle pass. So I did that. And then it was a little bit more and play a little more, play a little more. And then I went back to school and bought a laptop and got back to the keyboard and mouse playing. And it just more and more. Then one of his friend's dad's, who I work with, he ends up playing. So we started playing together. And uh, what really got me into it hardcore was I ran across an ad on Facebook for the dad gaming for one of the the big tournaments they had. Uh, Actually, I think Dan, I think you ran that because it was like four or five, six tears it may have been i may be wrong on that it may have been ruben that ran it yeah it was it was uh, it was not me i promise you because it was not until you knuckleheads and channel three finally finally dragged me (laughs) kicking and screaming into Fortnite, and probably were it not for the fact that i was doing the wednesday nights and like all right fine between the combination of no builds coming in that so no it was not me it was some other bearded white guy it 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 must have been ruben then but um I, i think there were six or seven lobbies and i wanted one of the planners jerseys didn't win one but that got me into the dad gaming. And then that one guy from 
that used to be the streamer there. I, I don't some weirdo. Some, some yeah, he's yeah. Got, some some guy with, with no name, right? Some yeah, we're not going to name Tor- him. or something like that. Uh, something with cameras. Yeah, yeah. We 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 ended up. We had a little tussle going on. We'd kill each other and post videos about it. It just it kept going and. The camaraderie, though. I, I've made so many friends from the Dad Gaming and Channel 3 playing Fortnite. People that I can hop in right now. I could start the game up and three or four of them would be on. I could go hop in a squad and just sit and talk. Win, lose, doesn't matter. Now, I do get upset at the game. I do. It, yeah. Definite love-hate relationship. I don't know if you and Mrs. Gar got a laugh in the other room. I There are days I rage quit, but there are other days I have a lot of fun. And it doesn't matter if I'm winning or losing. There's days I have fun and days I don't. So that's that's why Fortnite's up here. It almost didn't make it. I almost put it in the honorable mentions for a completely different game that's not even on my list. But I was like, no, this is this is better than the other online games I've played. That would have been anyway. a true that would have been a true Rocket League move. We've noticed a pattern with the Rocket League players that they like, never talk about Rocket League. It, it, it's either at best on their honorable mentions or it just does not come up. We're like, that's a Rocket League. Nope, nope, never comes up. It's definitely one of those games. Rocket League too, love hate relationship. And I get that. It, there's so many games out there you have that love hate relationship with it. You love to play it, but then you have that bad day and you just want to throw your controller, or throw your mouse, or throw your headset, walk away, and then the next, but the next day you turn it right back on. That that's such a crazy story because and I, everybody knows that I play Smash Brothers mostly on the Dad Gaming, but that that Fortnite event you're talking about is the first Dad Gaming event I played into, and I, I think I played in maybe one or two Sundays before that. But that was that was my first one too. I and I won a Planters jersey. That is my first jersey. I got it as a I was one of the random raffle winners. Showed up in my email. They said, "Hey, by the way, you won." No clue how I won it. They were like, "Yeah, you're getting a jersey." I was like, "All right." That's like, that's hilarious. I played in it. I was like, just so many lobbies. I don't know what's going on here, but yeah, sure. Why not? Let's, let's do this. Yeah. So, actually my buddy that I play, I used to play with, he doesn't play anymore. He won one of the jerseys and it's like, dang it. I, I wondered. Hey, that random raffle, you didn't just get the Jersey. You got the package with the snacks. I and got everything. the package. That's right. I got the cheese balls and everything. I got the whole package. All right. So we have to, we need to figure this out. How long? And I'm, I'm make sure I have the right, the right name. It's is this Scuba Jonesy? That's the Jonesy you have, or is there another long bearded Jonesy? That is Bunker Jonesy. Yours is Bunker Jonesy. I believe that was chapter chapter one, season nine. I'm gonna look is when that it was a battle pass. It was season nine or season ten. It was whatever one where Jonesy and Peely go into the bunker, and Bunker and Jonesy walks out with the long beard carrying a slushy of Peely in his hand. My, so, my son would be very happy to hear. I got to find that for him. He'll be very happy to hear of Peely's destruction. So when you got when you got that skin, because I assume once you got that first battle pass with your son, you just you've earned one after another because it pays for itself, which is one of the genius features of Fortnite. Uh, yeah, once, yeah, I just once you got forward. it. But did you know? Did you know? Like, oh, this is it. This this is who I am now. I'm going to oh, be yeah, about yeah. I put on Bunker Jonesy and a couple of buddy of mine are like, that fits you perfectly. And then they came out with the Greybeard bear variant. They okay, didn't, yeah. That was a surprise towards the yes, end. Yes, because the picture is he's blonde. Bunker Jonesy yes. is blonde. And, and I threw that on because it's like, I have some gray in my beard. It's not all red. And so that was, so that was immediate. And so you've been Bunker Jonesy for the past three chapters now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I rarely, it. rarely put on anything else. So moving to now, how have you enjoyed this this new map, this newest map now here with all the castles that look exactly the same? It, it's it's tough to say. I, I I enjoy the map. I do miss the chapter two map. Um, that was probably my favorite map of all time. That being said, the, the actual chapter one map, there's a lot of stuff from it I miss too. But chapter two is probably my favorite. As far as the guns. I'm glad they made the pistol automatic. It kind of takes away from the SMGs, but the pistol was always one of my favorite weapons, and it was so hard, especially on keyboard and mouse, to hit that second or that third shot, and now it's just hold it down and shoot. But at the same time, you know, it's they nerfed other guns. The, the SCAR, you pick up the old SCAR and the new SCAR, and it's a completely different guns. But as far as the map goes, it, it, it's fun. Um, I... I think it had a lot of chapter one vibes with the different land types other than they didn't have it. We don't really have any sand, but that's how it goes sometimes. Yeah, I'd say because I don't think I've played 
If I played the chapter one map, it may have been once or twice, and I can't remember. I played the other three. This chapter to me has been the oddest, the oddest one. Something about it. I don't know. I can't flow with it. I'm kind of waiting for something to happen with it or some change. It's, just, it's been it's been odd, an odd one for me. How the, about the big but, thing with this map is part of the change and part of the reason I think chapter three was so short was they came out with zero builds and then they realized the map that they had was not good for not being able to build. Mm -hmm. So they wanted a map that would work with builds and work without builds both. And that's kind of what they were going for here. That's a good point. How about the augments? Have you enjoyed the augments? Because that, that that was a kind of a risk, right? Like adding power ups to a battle royale where the idea is always supposed to be everyone's kind of on this even playing field at all times. The the augments, there's some good ones, there's some bad ones. It's not really much more of a risk than adding like the single mythic item mm -hmm. that is just so much more better than everybody else. If you get the right weapons, you're basically unstoppable if you can hit shots. You, know, you get the, the mythic munition now. Oh man, that that augment is insane, especially if you get light fingers, which you know, a mythic pistol makes with reload really quick. Pistol amp is good with that, but that's not necessary. But yeah, the augments, if you get good ones, they're really good. If you get bad ones, you're spending a lot of gold, which I don't spend gold on anything else anyway, so why not? Are you are you um are you somebody that hires help? Or you are are you against the hiring of, of help? I don't generally hire help. I have been known to after learning if something the one of the one of the guys from the Dag Gaming Group said was I don't remember which one it is, but you can hire them, fire them, buy splashes from them, and rehire them. So you have somebody following you around with heels at all times. That, that has would to be expensive, be, though, right? Uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you waste the money. <laughs> a couple thousand gold in one match, but a if win's you need a the heels, win. It's there. Exactly what it takes to win. Whatever it, that's all that matters. And all right, I'll wrap up this section with one more question. How have you enjoyed? Because you, like you said, you took over for your wonderful friend, the Bobolski. You took over the streaming on the Sunday night. How has that been taking over the rec league? And you know, now you don't even have to worry about telling people, "Hey, don't build," because there's a whole mode for it. Have you have you enjoyed hosting that? You know what? What have you enjoyed most about it? I do love doing that. It don't get me wrong; it gets tedious sometimes. Especially if I forget to do something like make the event on Thursday or Friday or, you know, go in and remind everybody something on Sunday. It, but I mean, I've gotten pretty good at that. I, I love doing it because I meet so many people. A lot of people enjoy playing with me. So there are people who don't enjoy playing with me. That's fine. But uh, as far as taking over for Robolski, there was actually Kyle, one or two guys in between us. But I will say it. He's going to hear it. Maybe. I don't know. That was a large shoe to fill he is much more charismatic on there than i am i've told him that he knows it it's just how it is but i do my best i do I, i'll never say i don't love doing it i will probably do it until i can't do it anymore or until something happens so yeah i i love doing it i was gonna say i, I i've chatted with jason you know sparingly about it but i every time i talk to him i tell him hey you know you doing the stream is what kind of why i joined up to the day giving the whole thing yeah, I watched him do it and I said, this is so cool. Like I'm watching him. I want to be part of this and this was fun. So I, I tell him all the time, I, I kind of owe him. I owe him and him doing the streams for being here today and all, you know, all the way here. There's, there's no doubt about it. And so, all right, well, with that, you know, we've talked, we've given enough compliments with Volsky. I don't want Gargana's head to explode or compliment him too much. So we're going to move on to the honorable mentions, the games that just missed out. And the first one on the list is Valheim. And if you don't know Valheim from the studio that brought Goat Simulator. That is uh, who created Valheim. That was a fun fact I learned today. And I'll start with this, because Valheim is not one that I hear about a lot. I don't, I don't do this category of game of the sandbox creating very often, but I hear about Rust a lot, and I hear about No Man's Sky. I feel like those always show up to me. Why, why is Valheim your choice? I, I think it's my choice because I can... Go in there and sit down and relax and build a building. Go out and kill monsters or go out and mine iron. I mean, you don't have to do certain things. You don't have to worry about playing online or playing with other people. You can just sit down and do it. You can play with other people if you want to also. But I think it's just, I think it's that I can sit down and do what I want to do and not worry too much about it. It's not, I have to worry about being attacked or worry about other things other than just what I want to do. So you talked to Fortnite about 
that being the game where you, you know, chatting with a lot of people, meeting new people, is Valheim kind of your solo? Is that your solo time? Do you mostly play on, on your own and just, like you said, kind of do it the way you want to do it? Yeah, that that is one of the games where I, I just, it's me, I want to do it myself. You know, I don't know a whole lot of people who play it, and that's part of it, but it's also one of those games where I really don't want to play with anybody else. Mm-hmm. It, it it does doesn't seem like it would be as fun for two or three people. I could be wrong. I, I I may be completely wrong on that. But yeah, it's it's my forget anything. Don't I don't have to think about anything. Game. I can just sit down and play it and have fun. So when I was looking it up, I saw that the, I guess the goal of the game, which you can kind of do what you want, is to defeat the six kind of main bosses whenever you feel like or in, in each biome. Have you gone through any of the bosses, or are you really content? You're like in the first biome, and I'm gonna make the building and kind of just relax here or have you progressed through the game at all i uh i have not beat the recent release boss uh, mm-hmm. the newest boss that came out in i think november yeah december but i have beat all the five the five other ones i i did go through the game and fully completed it build everything i could possibly build i actually have a base i i might throw a picture on the channel three one of these days it's if it was a real life base, it would probably be you know three, three or four city blocks. It was just that big, and I just sat there, built, 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 because that's what I felt like doing that time. So, yeah, it's I, but yeah, I did go through. I beat all the bosses. Um, the the big thing there is after you beat the first boss, your base gets attacked by monsters from the biome of the next boss, and then after you beat the second boss, you get monsters from the biome of the third boss and it, it goes on until you get to the final boss after you beat the final boss you still get random stuff but it's all random you might get the toughest ones you might get the easiest ones but it's and it doesn't happen very often it's not like some other games where it's just constant barrasian we're talking you can play for four or five in-game days and never have an issue and then get two attacks in a row and then go for seven in-game days 10 in-game days and have no issue whatsoever so my last last question. Do you have like a little base in each biome or did, did you settle in on one biome? That's where that big like city block base is. I probably have multiple bases in just about every biome. You don't want to try to be out at night in this game. If you're out at night, you get attacked by really tough creatures from the step up biome. So if you're in the, the first biome, which is the full the, the meadows and you're out at night you're going to get four or five six creatures from the uh, black forest coming at you and they're just i mean they're going to obliterate you so if you're out you travel for an in-game day you build another base put a little bed in there go to sleep or get farther in the game you can put portals in there to move back and forth as long as you have don't have certain items on you um so that's definitely something or if you're in a boat you may not get you're probably not going to get attacked at night but you do run the risk of running into a serpent which you have to get away from you're not going to fight it on the water because you'll end up stuck in the water and probably die all right let's move into the next honorable mention we're going to 1996's command and conquer red alert a game frankly i had to add to the library we had red alert 2 in there but you specifically called out red alert so it's in there now trying to make sure i especially with the list being added by joel this week for guests to add their games discussed on the podcast but you know tell me about this was this a pc playstation run for you and uh how'd that one end up in the honorable mentions the first time i played it was on pc but it ended up in the honorable mentions because of the fact that it was one of the first games I played that I could get online and play against other people. It was a competitive game, and I was so good at this game, I did not lose. I'm not going to say I can go back and do that now, but at the time, you could not beat me. I, I knew exactly what to build and when to build it and what to do, and it didn't matter where on, what map you put me on, where, you, where I was at, I was going to come at you and I was going to win. And it was just the first online competitive game. Like I said, I started on the PC, and then a buddy of mine had four, yes, four PlayStations all linked together, and we could sit down and play all together on those four PlayStations. So that was that was very interesting. Why he had four of them, I don't know. I guess it was just for that, but it was fun to do. So what? So listen, you gotta tell us. I mean, I know the game's available on Steam now, but you gotta share the strategy. 
What what was it that led you to to taking care of business here? Been so long. Um, don't, don't pull that. You're, you're you're trying to hide from us. You're, what are you worried we're going to pull a Command uh, and Conquer Red Alert uh, C three CS coming up for March here? Ray, write that down. That's actually that's not a bad idea. Write that down. <laughs> it's on. I put it on a list. <laughs> that's it. The, the biggest thing was you wanted to mine as much as you could right off the bat. So you were going to build. Two build or the, three. Build those assets up. Yeah. You were going to build two or three of the, the trucks to go out and get stuff and just come back. And if there were gyms nearby, you were directing them to the gyms. Stay away from the, the tiberium. Go straight for the gyms. And then don't even mess with the light tanks. Go for the heaviest tank and troops. Overwhelm them with troops, but you have that nice heavy tank that their light tanks can't even come up on because it's going to take one of them out, two of them out in one or two shots. So... Go for the heavy tanks and the troops right off the bat. So so I guess you kind of answered my last question. This is uh, available on Steam now, but probably not one you've cracked. I think we got to we got to reignite an addiction then if that's uh, if that hasn't happened. for Get that bad boy on Steam. Get this thing moving again. I am actually sitting here looking at my Command and Conquer co- collection that I bought in the 19. No, in the 2000s. And it had Tiberian Sun, Red Alert 2, Yuri's Revenge, and Renegade on it. And I think it actually had the original Red Alert in there, too. All right, last game on the honorable mention list is Diablo. So, are we talking about original Diablo or the series? That is definitely the series. And, and He's this, smuggling I, in, Ray. He's smuggling them in. It's a, new, it's, a, it's a new technique that people have done, let me tell you. I, I'm okay. going to steal that technique. The original Diablo... Uh, Got me into it. The whole ARPG where you're just running through and killing as fast as you can got me to do the speed runs just to see how fast I could do things. And every Diablo since then, Diablo 2 kind of slowed it down a little bit. Diablo 3, I actually was the first Diablo I played on a console instead of PC. And that was a huge difference because it's fun on the PC. Don't get me wrong. You're clicking, you're clicking, you're clicking, you're clicking, you're constantly clicking. Throw a controller in your hand, it's so much better to play, and it's so much more fun. And the speed runs, like three, four minute to complete an entire rift of Diablo 3. It's just, it's so satisfying to do it. And I think that's the biggest thing. It's another one of those mindless games that are just, here, just press buttons and do it. And that's what I love about it. And, it, and it's randomly generated each time too, right? The, the kind of the quest you do, is it the order that's, that's random? Is it the actual quests that are random? There's only one or two missions that are the same, right? Uh, towards the, the end game, basically, the the quests are always the same, but the dungeons are randomly generated. So every time you go into a dungeon, it's completely different. The original Diablo was not like that. They you just went down through the uh, the dungeons below the the church there in Tristram, but uh, they were random. Like every time you played through, they'd be random ge- randomly generated. But after you completed a level, if you went back through it, it's always the same. Whereas and three, every time you log in, I think it was different. And I think two stayed the same. I think they were kind of, two was kind of the open world type game, whereas three is more run through as fast as you can and see what you can do. Did you have a go-to class? Was it warrior, rogue, or sorcerer? Always sorcerer. I, that's something I didn't mention. Every <laughs> time I play an RPG. I, I've, insulted and, this, I've insulted this man right here. Uh, if, if, anyone see, if anyone sees his face, I'm well, insulting our guy with, with this question. Clearly, I've not done my research. I, I, I got to okay. make a note here on the times on, on the timestamp. I got to see if we get a gif out of that one. The beard. I mean, it just screams wizard. Come on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, Is this another one? Like you say, you just kind of zone out into this game. Is it, Do you play? Are you by yourself on this one? Is this one you're um, playing by yourself or you're playing with people? Diablo 1 always by myself. Diablo 2, I, I would play online sometimes, but with the number of people that always cheated on Diablo 2 Battle.net servers, I just kind of stayed away from it and just played it all myself. Uh, Diablo 3, that was one that my wife, my son, the three of us could sit down and play together. The only bad thing is you had to be on one screen when you were on the same PlayStation. So if one of you was trying to move, the if somebody was at the other side of the screen, it wouldn't let you go anywhere. And so are you looking forward to Diablo 4? I am. Um, I will probably, it's one of the few games that will probably buy release day. I, I know I just mentioned this. I don't pre-order games. I learned the hard way that it's not worth paying a little bit of money to pre-order a game that may actually not be very good. Cyberpunk. 
they made good. They made good. It only took them like three, two or three years. They, 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 that, that's the rare time where that happens, though. That's, uh, that is the exception, not the rule. I'm, I'm with you. Outside of the, the very specific either PlayStation first party Naughty Dogs or uh, some of the Nintendo first parties, is uh, that, that's about it. It was a rough week with the Nintendo Direct. Don't again. I, I had to update with a few. Uh, there were a few pre-orders that may have happened this week. On that, I, I just I just can't do it. On that note of future games, let's talk about a future game you're looking forward to here. Sons of the Forest, sequel to 2018's The Forest. Actually, this will be airing like right around when this thing comes out, I guess. Yeah, I guess this will this will be airing just before the game comes out. I, I don't have my spreadsheet in front of me, but it will be. But a, a, a first-person survival horror game, what I'm happy to say, not just brown and drab. If they actually make use of, you know, it's not, oh, we're in the forest and all the, the forest is dead. It's actually like, I don't it feels good to look at this one. I have not played the forest, but I'm intrigued. Uh, you brought this up, made sure it's added to the library before. I think I had it on because I had games listed for uh, looking forward to in 2023. But, you know, tell me about this. Did you play the forest? Is that what you're looking forward to here? You know, how'd you find this one? So, yes, I, I played The Forest. Um, I played on PlayStation with my son. And that's that's the big draw here is playing with my son. I cannot play these style games with a controller. I just I can't do it. And the big thing that I love, I'm looking forward to with Sons of the Forest is it, it continues on the storyline a little bit, but it's supposed to have cross-play. I'm supposed to be able to buy it on PC and him buy it on PlayStation, and we'd be able to play together, which we cannot do with The Forest. So that's one of the big draws there. Again, it's a survival game. I love survival games. I love going through and trying to find out how long I can survive before I die or go through and see how quickly I can die with really good gear. I've tried that. So it's it's drawn me in because of things like that and because I can play with my son. So how did you do the key? You brought up the keyboard and mouse a few times. Ray's dabbled. I know that I, the closest I came to dabbling was yesterday. My controller died and apparently I hadn't updated the firmware. So it just wasn't working. And I ended up having to play keyboard and mouse and it, it did not go well. I, I'm just stuck with a controller for life. How did you, how that happened for you? Was that, that command and conquer era to, to go back to that? How, how that work out for you better than the controller? Teach me. Uh, part, guy, teach me. Part of it was command and conquer. Part of it was uh, a game that actually, I decided not to put on the list Dark Age of Camelot. I played that for I don't know how many years, but you had to have big MMO. You had to use keyboard and mouse. There's no way you can play it on controller because you have so many buttons. Just same with WoW and the other big MMOs like that. And I think that's just where I got it. It was more comfortable. Not only that, I cannot aim with a controller. Like if you gave me a controller on Fortnite, you'd get like. The worst player in Fortnite could kill me easily because I cannot aim with a controller shooters. So I just keyboard and mouse feels more natural to Ray, take it down. Gargata handicap night. Make Mrs. Gargata force him to play with the controller. <laughs> I'm with him. I can't I can't aim with a controller. Like I thought I was just terrible at, at FPF games just in general. And then I switched to mouse and keyboard and I realized, no, I'm only partially terrible. But part of that is I, I cannot aim with the controller. It just feels so much nicer on the mouse and keyboard with everything except payload. That's the only one that hasn't made the change yet. Everything else, I'm on a mouse and keyboard now. And now I will note one of my best investments, and it was actually, I asked for it for Christmas from the Lulz a couple of years ago, was the Razer Tartars. And if you've never used one, look into them. It adds a, a D-pad on the side for your thumb and then a small 20 key or 19 key keyboard with a, a mouse wheel. And then next to your thumb, there are a couple more keys that you can map to certain things. That's been a huge, huge boon for me on top of a, a good multi-button mouse. No, nah, my, my hands are too goofy for that to work. That's just not going to happen. It looks, right. it looks really cool. You always talk about it. It's not, it's not the first time you mentioned it. It looks awesome, and I, I, might have to, I might have to try it out one day. I mean, you can pick up a, a V2 for like 80 bucks right now. It's not I'm, that expensive. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> eBay's got a pre-owned one for 42 bucks, but it's not pretty. It doesn't have the rainbow colors. I want the rainbows. I, I will say you don't want to buy a pre-owned one. Um, uh, I'm not. This, I'm just looking at it. <laughs> this is my second one. And the the buttons, if they're used a lot, can go out. But mm -hmm. I, don't let that deter you. It's, it's well worth the money. All right. Next, we are going on to a quest. A question from the Channel 3 History Books for us to discuss with you. This is one that we don't give you a heads up on what we're going to talk about. The quest that we've picked for you to discuss. What is the game that caused you to miss something? 
Final Fantasy VII. So when that game came out, I may or may not have been known to fall asleep with a controller in my hand. I missed school because of this game. <laughs> because, hey, I woke up and started playing and nobody told me it was time to go to school. So I didn't go to school. School will still be there. Aerith will not. Exactly. And I I don't know how many hours I logged on that game. It, it, it wasn't on my list because it's just one of those games that I think everybody's played that plays RPGs. And it, to me, it wasn't that exciting for, for the list here. No, you know, everybody's got it on the Mount Rushmore, no matter what. Like, even if you want to put together other games, like, everybody just assumes Final Fantasy VII is in the rafters. The jersey's hung up. We know it's up there. We respect it. We may not talk about it, but it's it's up there for sure. So was it just grinding away that got you caught up? Were you would you just rail through the story? How how did your process work for Final Fantasy VII? I say as a person who spent a lot of hours just killing things in the random fields to make sure I was strong enough. I, I want to say it was the hangar that I just kept going in and killing and killing and killing and back out, go back in and just run around and kill so that I could be strong enough to beat the underwater underwater boss. I wanted to level up my materia. I had like five Knights of the Round materias fully maxed out. So that's all I did. And I, I wish the timer would have went past 99 hours and 99 minutes and 99 seconds because I'm sure there was another nine in there somewhere. I had so many hours on that game. All right, so last question of the show what has been your favorite feature on channel three so far i I feature i can't just say the whole thing um i seriously i love it i I love channel three i I love the the fact that i can support other gamers without all the bullcrap you you log into things like facebook or instagram or somewhere else and you're always seeing something that screams i don't want to be here Whereas with Channel 3, it's 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 games. It's video games. It's talking about video games. It's, hey, this is something I did. Whether, whether it's a game that I play or not, it's something somebody's excited about, and I'm excited that they are having fun doing it. And it's a great place to share all that stuff. Uh, I agree with you completely. It's, it's, it's a place where you know everyone cares about what you have to say, or at least it's going to be genuinely excited for you. Because you, because you know that you're going to be excited about something else, and you want someone else to feel that for you too. And so it's just that I'm with you 100 percent on that. And with that, we've made it to the end of another episode of What Are You Three. Thank you, Gargata. The podcast drops every Wednesday morning at 3:33 a.m. Eastern on all the major platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. You can always find the show at c3.gg/podcast. I am El Ray. Dan Tucker puts this whole thing together. Joel Willis is the executive producer. Have a good day, everybody.